Everybody, this is me, Undead Viking. I want to take some time on your day to talk to you about this game. It is called Roan, or Races of the New Era. This is a post-apocalyptic card game where each person is going to be playing a hero, which is like a mutant or a hybrid or a human, and you're going to have a bunch of like units that are going to fight for you, and you're also going to have these cards that are like tactics cards and technology cards that you're going to use to do battle against your opponent, and you're going to be trying to take them out before they take you out. I really like these battle card games. I enjoy them. I, I enjoy playing uh, games that have lots of different options, lots of different things going on, and the, my ability uh, is is like trying to come up with the good combos, the good cards that work together uh, to have um, them, you know, like be triumphant, if you will. Uh, so let me tell, show you how the game is played. It'll take a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. The game is pretty straightforward. The the the, the the fun part of the game is the sheer enormity of the different types of cards and different units and different tactics that you can use and, and getting and figuring out how those can work together and put them together. So um, let me show you how the game is played and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about why I am liking Roan. Alright, so I've gone ahead and set up Roan. Now, normally this is a two or four player game. Um, you, if it's four players, it's like two on two, or like teams of two that battle against each other. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you uh, one side of a two player game. This is how I've played most of my games of Roan. Uh, I did play a couple of the four player game, and that was a lot of fun, but this is what I've done mostly. Alright, so... Uh, you, you construct a deck. This is a deck game, but this isn't like a deck building game. You're not constructing the deck as you play. Uh, you will create your deck or create it randomly or like pick your cards or whatever, however you want to roll. Um, and then, but you also get to pick a hero. Now, of course, you can pick whatever hero you want or you can, um, you know, draw it randomly, whatever. Here you get three hero cards. You notice there's this one, two, and three, and you notice the background is a little bit different in each one. Um, that is the level of the hero. And so here we have, and he's Arco Sevel. Um, he's a mutant hero, and so he has, like, little stats and things like that that um, is, of course, iconography that when you first see it, you're not going to understand it, but as you play the game, it'll just click, click, click for you, and you'll understand what's going on. Um, some of the stats you're going to see, here's the level of one. You'll notice that this is a game that has different exhaustion levels. I love this. I've, I've played a few games with this ability, and these things are going on. I love the fact that, so, like, if you exhaust him once, he goes like this, and, like, two, and then three. And then as he refreshes, he slowly goes. And this is, this is the same for all of the cards. They have these little levels on each side. I, I love that aspect of the game. But, um, so... You'll notice that some of these have a color symbol, like here's a purple and here's a yellow there. Those actually tie into, you can see here is a purple little one here and there is a yellow two. So if you use these abilities, it's telling you to, to turn it to that point. So if you use this ability for the two, you go immediately like that, and you put it like that. If you're going to use his ability here, it's just a one. So, pretty simple. Okay, this number up here, that is what tells you how many, um, how much water, the resource, there's only one resource in the game, it's water, how, many, how much water you have to collect, and you can use it to level up to level two, and then it's 12 to get to level three, and so on and so forth. Over here, you can see the income. Um, he gets plus six water each turn, this is for cards. He doesn't get any cards at level 1, but he gets level 2. He gets one card, and then one card. And you can see how it's 8 water for level 3 and 7 water for level 2. The abilities stay the same, but you know, as you level them up, you get a little bit more stuff. You get that card, you get the water. But the most important thing is, is that uh, the, the level of the hero determines what level of cards you can put into play. At level 1, you can only put level 1 cards in. Level 2, you can put these and Well, you can probably figure it out. So if you're level 3, then you can use all the cards that are available in your deck. All right, so there you go. That is the hero. Now, just so you know, like, for this level one, you can see if you enact that, you get plus one water or plus one card. So you can activate that ability at the beginning of your turn. You can say, okay, I want to add an extra water to my supply so I can I can play more cards. Um, this unit here, refresh one times target card. So, like, you, this is to, if you turn him upside down, if you had a card out in the battlefield area there, um, you would be able to then refresh that, you know, one time. You know, normally at the beginning of your turn, if you have anybody that is needs to be refreshed, you get to refresh them automatically one level. But obviously, if you use that ability, you could refresh something else a second time. So you just put all three of those cards there in a little stack, and then that's good to go. Um, 
Here, this is a technology deck. These are five random cards you get technology, or you can pick, or whatever you want to do, drafting. And these are technologies, as you can see, um, I didn't really get a good draw here, because I only got one level one technology. But these are like little permanent uh, wild card abilities that if you are able to enact them, you put them out into your active technology area, which would be over here. Sometimes they'll say to be put out in the battlefield, but you just you, you tell, do what it tells you to do. And these just kind of give you um, extra abilities. So like uh, here, if you activate this technology, um, you can see it costs one water to put it into play. Um, then target unit gains minus one, uh, like uh, uh, minus one ranged combat. That's that's that, that that ability there until the end of combat. And so you you turn it all the way over, and you could designate that by using these little tokens. Now I'm, I should have mentioned this is a prototype that I got. So the stuff you see in front of you, the cards and the art and everything, are I think are going to be pretty. Uh, uh, straightforward as far as and pretty uh, much a representation of what you're going to see but like as far as the tokens go um, these are my little mini poker chips obviously so those probably aren't going to come with the game because uh, those are mine but anyway so uh, at the beginning of your turn what you're going to do is you're going to draw six cards and you get a 24 card deck as I said so we're going to draw one two three four five six and now remember you're not going to draw six cards every turn and the thing is is that also your deck is your life. So if you run out of cards in your hand and also in your draw deck, you lose the game. But so that is uh, like, and when you take damage, you have to get rid of discard cards and things like that. So um, that is your life. And I do kind of like that. I, you know, and I played other games like that where the deck is um, your health. And I like that aspect um, just because it, it teaches you, you can't just burn through your cards. You got to be very wise and judicious uh, when you use your cards. But anyway, so uh, on your turn, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to look at your cards and like, here's my six, my starting hand. And I see I got a lot of level ones, which is good. Uh, I got one level two, but that's okay. You know, I mean, I'll be level two eventually. And I should mention that when you collect your water, um, you get to keep it. Uh, you don't. It doesn't run out. So like, I get six water. So I'll just take six. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And like next turn, if I like had that left over and I got another six, you know, I'd have more available. And so you can actually save your water uh, to use. Now you could use anything for that. I guess you could use like twenty sided die or something too. But I like using my chips. But anyway, so so you here you have these. Like here's a, a unit. Uh, it, it costs five water. I'm sorry. It costs five water uh, to put them in. It's brigadiers, um, a unit human, and you can see that they have um, it's a little like a little punch here. There they have melee of one, um, and they have one hit point over here. And you'll notice that there is a yellow one right there. So if I attack with these, they exhaust to one like that. And then they refresh, and so I can attack with them. Whereas if we have this one, it's a level one guy. Um, you know, it costs. Uh, you know, he has he's a uh, dawn warrior. Uh, has a range attack of one, and you notice it's a three. So if I attacked with this guy, I would actually have to go like that, and then I'd have to wait a long time before he'd be available for me to use again. Up here is the cost it takes to. Uh, activate them and put them into play. So this would be five water. This over here is the recycling cost. I'll keep that in mind. I'll explain that in just a, just a little bit. But also some of these have little abilities. So like when this Dawn Warrior enters the battlefield, he gets to exhaust a target unit one time. So like I could exhaust, I, I, I'm going to activate him and then my opponent, I'm going to go ahead and exhaust one of your things that you have out in the battlefield. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, so uh, that, that unit wouldn't be able to. Now notice it says unit, it isn't the hero. So so, you know, just keep that in mind. But, you know, so here's, uh, or here's like this robot. Um, you know, notice how it has a two there for the attack. And then return the bottom card from your graveyard back to your hand. Now, your graveyard is cards that you discard. You just kind of put them right there. And so, obviously, the Wisp of Doom guy, that's pretty good. Um, but whenever you do a recycle, you return the bottom card from your graveyard back to your hand. Now, I mentioned that recycle a couple of times. And here's like, I just want corrosion, reduces target unit life to one things like that. Oh, defender cards. I should mention this before I get too far away. So defenders, um, when they defend, uh, they don't exhaust. So if somebody attacks you and you have a defender and they're, they are refreshed, notice how you could attack with this guy if you wanted to. Um, but if he's, if they are available, 
uh, to activate. Um, defender cards will um, don't cost anything to defend with, and they have to target um, the defend. They are the ones that the people have to attack first before anything. Um, you can't actually attack the opponent's hero until they don't have. Um, as long as they have cards in front of them that aren't exhausted, um, they have to attack those to get to you. So that's one of those things. Also, it's like, well, I could attack with all my guys on my turn, or you know, I could wait. You know, one of those things. But anyway, so on your turn. Uh, what you'll be doing is you'll look at the cards you have in front of you, and you'll determine what you want to do. So obviously you want to get some cards out there, maybe you want to defend with them, and you know, this is this is a pretty good card, and it costs four. So, you know, one of the things you can do, you'd spend, you know, I go, I count out four water, and I'd spend those, and I'd put that guy out here in front of me in the battlefield. And so, um, then he's available. How about I move that down just a little bit so you can actually see him. So, like, move him down. There you go. So, he would then be available to me in the battlefield and he could defend me. Notice how, like as I said, has that ability for the defense. And, uh, and that would probably, you know, maybe then I would be, you know, I'd only have the one, two, two water left. I probably wouldn't have any other options to do it. Now, that isn't the only thing you can do. Um, you can play tactics cards. Tactics are like a one-shot thing. As soon as you play them, you do. So, if I, I, I for like if I was level two and I, I played this tactics card, you know, you then put the tactics card over here, you know, and so that that goes. Now, I'm just gonna do a couple of things here. Just, just I'm just gonna put these cards over there so you can see what I'm gonna do now. So if the way the recycling occurs is that if you want to recycle a card, um, what you will, what you have to do is you you can only recycle the top card on the deck, and I, that's not going to work because that one's like a pretty high recycling, all these are high recycling amounts, but, so what happens here, I'll just put all these cards in here, just so you can kind of see how this works. So, if for whatever reason, I really wanted to put that card back in uh, into play, it has a four recycling, right there. So, what I do then is I take that card, and it's, since it's a unit, I'm going to put it back into play, and you have to exhaust it to level 2, so you have to turn it all the way upside down, so you can't use it right away. And I should mention, when you do activate cards first, they do go into play active. They don't, you know, they aren't tapped or exhausted or any way, uh, so they all do go in active, and you can attack with them immediately. Now, you might not want to, because then they wouldn't be able to defend you on the other person's turn. But, so in this case, so then what happens is, is you have to then take, since it's a four exhaustion, you have to take four cards out of your graveyard and ditch them permanently. You have to take these four cards and throw them to the side, and they're gone for the rest of the game. And so then you're really getting rid of hit points, because there's other abilities, like, you know, other than, like, I remember I showed you that card before that allowed me to take cards out of the graveyard. You know, you don't always have to burn cards to take cards out of the graveyard, and so you're permanently losing access to those hit points. However, that's a cool little aspect of the game, because of the fact that, you know, it is one of those things where it's like, I really want to get that card, I want to be able to use it again, uh, but it's going to cost me, and it's going to it's going to hurt, you know, literally. So it, it's kind of a neat uh, like way to, for you to be judicious in your actions. Now uh, the other thing, if, if you do a if you recycle a tactics card, like this is tactics, what happens then is you play the tactics card again, you do the ability, it does not go back to your uh, graveyard. It is discarded out of the game completely. So you can't just keep using the same tactics card over and over again. So uh, if you attack, attacking is really simple. You just pick a card that you want to attack with and say, like, you're going to say, I'm attacking with this guy, it ha he has a melee of one, and you're going to attack. And then the other player is going to, if they're going to defend again, Against it, they pick a card. If they defend, they exhaust it by one step to defend with it, unless it is a card that is a defender. And then you just compare the combat abilities. If they're if the opposing person, so let's say you know, let's say we're fighting um, Anatol Vrasov, this uh, mutant hero, uh, and let me just find like a, a, a monster in here that he might have activated, um, and so and then that, that is out there uh, to defend. So let's say he had you know Crusher out there to defend. And so what he would do then is he would exhaust him, like so, and then we would compare the, the situation. So he did a three a damage attack, and so he would do three points of damage. You'd look at this guy, you can see he's got one health. He would he would destroy him. But since they're both melee, you know, we would actually do the damage to Crusher. Uh, and and you know, and so 
uh, that was the case. Now, if we had a situation where it wasn't Crusher, and I gotta find uh, somebody that has ranged, um, range attack, obviously, because you're running up to something to attack it, uh, the, range, the range damage will go off first, and will affect, uh, will, will hurt first. I can't find one, of course. So, uh, here we go. So let's, let's just say, uh, that won't work, actually, because this one's invisible. Invisibility is kind of cool. Basically, you can attack with them, and they can't be defended against, but they can't be used to defend either, because they can't be targeted or anything like that. Kind of a neat little ability that invisibility has. Um, well, I just had... Oh, here we go. So, like, let's say they had this rifle woman as a defender. And notice how there's the two... Uh, the, this, this, the two... Uh, uh, you know, ranged attack. So the ranged attack, notice how these also got one hit point. So if this, these two attacked, so this guy attacks and this one defends, the two damage would hit him, kill him, and normally if like he was able to get up and hit her, it would do one damage and would kill her as well. But then that can't happen, obviously, because of the fact that, you know, she, he gets shot before he gets to him. So then, then you, you total up. Now, if you have a unit that has both range and melee, they'll do both the points of damage as long as they survive to get to the melee part. If you actually successfully hit um, your your opponent, uh, the, the hero, uh, they have to discard the number of cards equal to the amount of damage they took. And they can either take cards out of their hand... You know, so they, let's say I took two damage. Well, those are my technology cards. Can't use those. So, um, oh, here, I'll just. Ugh. Sorry about this. So let's say, like, these are the cards I had in my hand, and I took two damage. I could pick two cards out of this. Like, maybe I want to get rid of this one because it's a level two and I'm only level one. I'd go ahead. I'd say I'm going to discard this one, and then I didn't want to discard any of these, and so then I can take a card off the top of my deck. And so I go and I can look at this card, and it is a Wisp of Doom. Well, you know, I really want to keep my Wisp of Doom. So when you discard a card, you have the option of putting it underneath on the bottom or on top. So you can kind of keep, you know, the card that you want to recycle, possibly, on the top of the deck. And so I'm going to go ahead and I put my Wisp of Doom on the top there, because then on, you know, my turn or later on, if I wanted to recycle it, that card's available for me to recycle. So the game is just going to go back and forth. Each person is going to take a turn, and they're going to attempt to, uh, you know, basically knock out the other person's hero. The first person is able to do that. And remember, the way you do that is that they don't have any cards in their hand, and they don't have any cards in their deck anymore. Will win the game. So uh, there you go. That is the brief overview of the rules of Roan. Let me tell you exactly what I think about the game in my conclusion, which I'll do right now. Thank you very much for sitting through the how to play portion of this video. Um, if you are familiar with battle card games, this probably, uh, as far as the mechanisms go, wasn't a huge surprise to you. But there are a couple things that I mentioned in the gameplay portion that I really do enjoy about this. I already said I love the exhaustion thing. I just, I love the different levels and like trying to plan ahead. That's like the one thing I really always like doing and why my other people in my game group usually like are pulling their hair out is that I am a planner game. Gamer. I am always trying to figure out what am I going to, what position am I going to be in uh, two turns from now, three turns from now, four turns from now, and what what can I do to plan for that situation? And and I I kind of I always work myself backwards, you know, like okay, I think I'm going to be here, so I need to work myself from that point and like reverse engineer myself to this point. Now, what do I have to do to get there? And so I like. Um, these these games that have the different levels of exhaustion because I can like kind of see okay what can I do uh, to 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 do this now at this point and then you know how am I going to get that back to you know how am I going to get that back so I can use it again or do I want to wait until two turns from now to use that card that sort of thing and I really really enjoy uh, those types of games I I. Like, as I said, I, I dig the theme. I'm a post-apocalyptic guy. I, I, I really enjoy the whole idea of, of the world kind of being a wasteland and, and, you know, just, like, how are we going to survive? I'm always watching those shows, like, uh, you know, after the humans are gone. You know, what, 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 what will the cities look like, you know, 500 years from now? I, I like that, that mentality. I like those movies and stuff. So the theme grabbed me. The artwork's great. But... The other mechanism that I really enjoyed is the fact that your cards are your hit points. It isn't just something static where you just have, you know, like your hit points or these chips you have over to the side or a, or a turn style or something like that that you're totaling up. You 
have to figure out which cards you want. And the recycling portion of the game, that is like the coolest thing because of the fact that like, that's a really good unit and you kill that person's unit. Like there's like like level three monsters or, or mutants or whatever that you can have fighting for you. And if you can take those out, uh, you know, they usually cost a ton uh, as far as the recycling goes. And so, yes, um, the player can get them back, which is a little disheartening that oh, you just spent all those resources to take out, you know, this giant colossus or whatever. And then all of a sudden, like, they bring them back into play. But you know you've, like, permanently weakened them to a great degree because of the fact that they just had to ditch a ton of cards out of their discard or graveyard level. And so, you know, th th there's that aspect going on. It's the risk and reward and, like, did, like I, I, I've used the word judicious a few times in this review, but it is. It's a very judicious use of your very, very limited resources. And it's it's a it's a, it's a fantastic game. You know, do I do I spend my water this turn to level my hero up so next turn, you know, I can I can play these heavier cards, even though I'm not doing anything and I'm letting the other player, you know, probably bash me around or attack me this next turn. Things like that. So if you are a fan of a post-apocalyptic theme, if you're a fan of battle card games, I strongly suggest you check out Roan. Um, I've been having a heck of a lot of fun with this one. And uh, if you're a fan of these types of games, I know you will be too. So there you go. If you have any questions about the game, by all means, ask away. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, as always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I am telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.